Hi everyone! This is the third installment or part 3 of my series of videos for module 2 of the second quarter of grade 10 science. Kung hindi mo pa napapanood ang part 1 at part 2 ng discussion ko, please proceed to the links that I have posted below in the description part so that you can have a good practice of how to solve problems involving the first two equations that we need for the equation that we will be using today. As what I have said in the last video, we will be combining formula number 2 and formula number 1 into a larger equation this time. So what are these two equations? For the first part, we have C is equal to lambda F, which relates the wavelength and the frequency. For the second part, we have E is equal to HF, which relates energy and frequency. As you can notice, in the second equation, we can solve energy if you are given the frequency. But how about if you are not given the frequency but is instead given the wavelength? To answer problems like this, we need to derive. So first, we can rewrite the first equation in terms of F. And that will be F is equal to C over lambda. Now we can substitute this into the second equation. And we will be having E is equal to H times C over lambda. This would be our third equation. Remember, H or Planck's constant is equivalent to 6.63 times 10 raised to negative 34 joules second. And C is your speed of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum, which is equivalent or equal to 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second. Energy must still be expressed in joules and the wavelength must be expressed in meters. Dito, tatandaan din natin na dahil lang H at C ay mga constant na tinatawag natin, ang pwede lang hanapin sa atin sa mga problem na gagamitan na equation na to ay yung energy at yung wavelength lang. If we are solving for lambda, we can rewrite the equation as lambda is equal to hc over e. Now that you are familiar with our new formula, let's try to solve some problems. First problem, determine the wavelength of a photon with an energy of 5.1 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules. Again, here we are given the energy and we are asked for the wavelength. So let's write the given. Energy is equal to 5.1 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules. And then we have the constant H or the Planck's constant equal to 6.63 times 10 days to negative 34 joules second. We also have C for the speed of light or speed of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum. And we are looking for lambda or the wavelength. We will be using the derived formula 
for wavelength, which is hc over e, is equal to lambda. Now, let's substitute the values. Please be careful when substituting the values because you have two sets of numbers in the numerator. Lambda is equal to 6.63 times 10 raised to negative 34 joule second times 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second all over the energy equal to five point one times ten raised to negative nineteen joules. Simplify the numerator first. If you can input everything right away in your calculator. If we multiply the two sets of numbers that you have in the numerator, you will be getting 1.989 times 10 raised to negative 25. Divide it by 5.1 times 10 raised to negative 19 and you will be getting... 3.9 times 10 raised to negative 7 meters. Did you get the same answer? Let's go to the next problem. Calculate the energy of a photon of radiation with a wavelength of 6.4 times 10 raised to negative 7 meters. Now, we are given the wavelength and is being asked of the energy what are our given we are given the wavelength of 6.4 times 10 raised to negative 7 meters we also have Planck's constant and the speed of light in vacuum We are of course looking for energy. Substitute all of these values into our equation. E is equal to H times C over lambda. Can you continue the solution? Please pause this video so that you can continue your solutions on your own paper. And then if you are done, you can click resume for you to compare your solution to mine. Done? Now let's compare our answers.
Did you get the same value? Remember to multiply the numbers on the numerator first before dividing it by the denominator. Remember to use parentheses when typing your numbers into your calculator. Now, this is the end of our three-part video lesson about the calculations involving the different quantities related to electromagnetic waves. I hope I have taught you some techniques on how to solve these problems easily. If you learned something from my video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And you can also share this to your friends. That's all. Thank you and bye!